Tony Schiavone interviews Willow Nightingale and Chris Tatlander and Chris's pet lizard. His name was Boots, which I thought was funny because I think that's what you make boots out of. It's not a name. It's a prediction. Yeah, right. Wow. Yeah. Poor Boots. It's like naming your horse Clue. (laughs) (laughs) And now I want to write a cowboy song about Glue the horse. You're doing a hook versus Samoa Joe for the world title? That should be big news. It'd be even bigger news. He just cut a promo and they were like, so Brian Keith and Commander are in the ring. <laughs> it would be bigger news if Hook had actually beaten anybody to put him in line for a title shot. Well, he mentioned that his win-loss record was second to none. So he has been beating people. <laughs> Woo! It's me! It's a nature boy! Sting! Darby Allen! Look at his only we can look! And Darby's sitting there in a trench coat. With his face painted on. <laughs> well, listen. And I'm like, I think a lot of people look like that. My son... Bless his heart. He got me woo energy drinks. Oh. Does he hate you? These are the worst energy drinks I've ever had in my life. They are horrendous. They're so bad. Some more like ew energy drinks. You know, I tried to uh, Google this match afterwards because I, I, there was something I missed, and my safe search blocked it. There was a lot of badonka donk in this match. Yeah. Craig, please. At some point over the last year... Everything has done this big 180. Now, in WWE, people win 90% of the time in their hometowns. And on AEW, it's just they get beaten and beaten and beaten or beat down in their hometowns. It's incredible. It's a total 180. And I don't want to hear anybody defending this shit because everybody complained about it when WWE did it. And everybody praised it when AEW didn't do it. And now AEW is doing it, so don't tell me it's cool now. No, Sean, he's still under the weather. Oh. He's on the shelf. Mike Semper Vibi's on the shelf. The Empire's being taken down one by one. Would you rather watch Vinny eat 100 Oreos or watch Vinny wrestle Oreo? I know my vote. <laughs> Give me them cookies. Someone asked if we'd found that jar of blubber yet, and I don't know where it's at. It's still missing. Sean had to unscrew. Maybe yeah. that's what happened. But Sean took it? No, maybe yeah, maybe he took it and ate it, and that's why he's so sick. No. <laughs> Just the smell of it. First of all, so would you rather see Brian bring producer Rob back to the B&B show or watch Vinny wrestle Minoru Suzuki? <laughs> I'd kill to have that match. Same. <laughs> would you rather let Dixie Carter run a wrestling company today or let Vince Russo run a wrestling company today? Dixie. 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 I'll just say Dixie. I don't know what's going on. Would you rather have a vanilla Frosty or regular chocolate Frosty? Are these just milkshakes? I mean, kind of. You can't You can't eat it through a consume straw. Consume it with a straw. Okay. You, know, you can. It's... No, you can't. You just have to be able to suck really good, Craig. Yeah. Just need more practice, Craig. Yeah. I guess so. Chapter 31. Wow. Terry came out of the store and put the groceries in the back, but the guy he put him out, in the wrong car? Put him in the wrong car. You can imagine him coming out in about three or four days and smelling that rotten chicken. Glad we got to hear about that missing chicken. (laughs) Chapter 31. 21. You said 31. You did. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. Craig heard it too. Yeah. Chapter 31. Wow. Good way to send me out. I was worried about coming onto the show because I was completely lost. All I know is I saw ladies wrestling well. I don't have any names. Sounds like a hell of a review we're going to have here today. Julia versus Megan Bain for the Strong Women's Championship. Okay, I have a question right off the bat. Is this Mega or is this somebody else? Mega. Is there there a wrestler named Mega? No, that was the uh, AEW attorney. Oh, that's right. Yes. Carry on. Are we out of our fucking minds? It used to be D-A-L-Y's place. People are telling me it's always been D-A-I-L-Y. I remember it being D-A-L-Y. This is the Mandela effect. I'm not experiencing it myself. I don't remember it being spelled that way. Well, Sam remembers it too. Naming rights were secured by Dailies, a local convenience store chain. This is weird. When I heard they were doing this homecoming show... I thought, fuck, they should bring back everybody from, like, the pandemic era mm. and have, like, a big celebration. 
And they didn't do that. But they did pay tribute to Brody. And the video package they had, and, you know, they very specifically mentioned Preston Vance and Anna Jays as two handpicked protégés. They both were the people that got the win in the eight-mans. It's okay to have just a nice, fun show sometimes. The Bang Bang Scissor Gang. Seems like a game. Bang Bang Scissor Gang! Uh, sure. Hook versus Joe could be built into, like, a really big match. Maybe the reason they're throwing it out there next week is because, like, Joe is going to lose the title sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. But then I think about, is he really going to lose it to Swerve now? Because they're already building up this thing with Hangman, and, you know, Swerve beat Hangman twice, two times in a row. It looks like they're going to do a third match, or they're going to do something, Maybe they're going to end up in a three-way. That is where I think they're going at to the go. At the pay-per-view. That, that will be the pay-per-view match. Joe versus Swerve versus Heyman. Yeah. Takesh and Hobbs do the jump rope spot where they grab an arm and a leg. <laughs> sure, yeah. And they, you know, they should actually do that in one of the other heels should, like, jump rope while they're doing that, and then they toss him. It's not that funny, because they toss him, but then he landed mm. with his head and neck on the bottom rope. It was so bad, and he was hurting after that one. Sting, this crazy fucker, he gives Hobbs a death drop off the stage through two tables. This was completely fucking insane. March 3rd, Revolution, Greensboro, for your last match. Who will your opponent be? And they are inter interrupted by the young bucks looking very chill and very dapper. And they also have mustaches. And everyone just looks at each other. For a long, long time. You know, a lot of people were, Ah, is it the young bucks? Sting's last match, it should have been my... So the story is, Sting was the one who got to choose who his final match would be. So if you want to be mad at somebody, you can be mad at Sting. Mm -hmm. He's the one that chose the Young Bucks. The show opens with Nikita Lyons in her street clothes, attacked by Blair Davenport in her street clothes. Yeah. Okay. We are told they have been brawling nonstop as they fight their way down the aisle. Mm -hmm. And I suddenly notice, wait a second, they've got their gear on. They have wrestling gear on. Tights and boots and knee pads. Okay. In storyline, I thought at the time, while fighting, while throwing punches and kicks... They were simultaneously changing their clothes. Okay? As one does. Yeah. Remember the gimmick was Corbin and Braun hate each other. Yes. But then they both agree that we're both assholes. That is exactly the word. Remember I yes. said they should be team assholes? You did, yeah, yeah. Well, this fucking crowd starts chanting assholes. And Baron and Braun are like face to face and like pointing and thumbs up. They're the chummiest bunch of assholes you ever saw. This all ruled. Fallon Henley is at the ranch. Tiffany is supposed to show up for work today. Hannah doesn't wear this kind of outfit, but she's in the fancy stage. What? She will not do anything unless she's fancy, which means, you know, a good two dozen necklaces on, mm. bracelets all the way up her arm on both sides, a crown and then another crown, and a bunch of shit in her hair and everything like that. And she could not leave the house without a tutu on. Minus five stars. Listen to me talk about my daughters. Tiffany is sponging up Buttercup, and there are... Excuse me. That's what she was doing. Horrible. That's what she was doing. I know. There's... I felt bad for Tiffany. I did, too. She made Tiffany do this work, but did get her her own pink rake slash shovel thing. I, I think this is going to end up with these two becoming friends. They could. Together I hadn't thought titles. of that. I hadn't what? thought of that. That was the first thing I thought when this was over. Yeah. Oba Femi comes out with a referee. He is cashing in his breakout tournament contract right now. Catches him on a dive. Hits a big-ass powerbomb and wins. He's a big, impressive-looking guy. They've always liked big guys. Vince is now gone, mm -hmm. so it's a lot less important now. But it's certainly never going to hurt in any company. No, no. And they've got multiple actual potentially good giants in the pipeline. 